In this video, we're going to look at a few different ways that you can actually connect to your Chrome browser using Selenium. We'll start off by launching it from within our code like I'm going to do here. And then we'll move on to looking at Selenium Grid and how we can actually use that concurrently to run lots of different web pages in one go. Now, I'm just experimenting with Grid, so I'm not fully utilizing it. But I think what I'm going to show you you're going to like and is going to be pretty cool. So this is the basic starter code here. As you can see, I'm basically creating my Firefox driver and we're just going to load the page, get the HTML source. We're going to close the driver. Now, this is I'm doing this for a reason and I'll, I'll show you that later. Uh, and then we just pass the information out. So uh, if I was to run this file, we'll see the Chrome, uh, the Firefox instance open on that side and it will then load the page, close down, and we should get the information back. And it's gonna do that for every URL in that list, which we do not need to sit here and watch. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to go ahead and have a look at the Selenium uh, web driver and the remote driver section here, the remote web driver. So what this basically is, is it's saying that we can connect uh, remotely to that running instance of Chrome or Firefox or whatever it is that we've got. And this is really particularly interesting because we can now think about having our browser separate to where we're running our code. And that's the main thing I think to, to take away from this. It's very simple to make the change. As you can see, the code here is just changing the driver to webdriver.remote and the command executor here. And we're going to do that in just a second. And then we're going to move and then from doing that, we can actually look at grid. So grid is going to manage all of these instances of the headless browsers for you. I've started with the simple version. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up a new uh, brow a new terminal here, and I'm going to run this command. Now, this command is basically using Java to run the Selenium standalone grid server. This kind of like does everything in one go. So I'm going to hit enter and it's going to go ahead and hopefully start this up here on uh, port 4444. And as you can see somewhere around here, it says 12 times. And if I come to my browser and go to localhost 444, we can see that we have this Selenium grid UI that we can actually look at It'll tell us the running sessions that we've got. And it'll also tell us, hey, you've got 12 available instances of these uh, that you can concurrently spool up. So I'm going to use this now. We're going to change our code. I'm just going to move this one over to where the browser is here. And we'll go back to our main.py file here. And so we'll remove this and we'll add in our uh, options. So like we saw in the documentation, and we'll have uh, webdriver.firefox options and then from here we can say that our driver is going to be equal to webdriver.remote and we need to have the command executor which is the localhost url that we just create we just run our uh, selenium grid instance on 4444 and then the options was going to be equal to the options for Firefox options that we just created. I said options a lot of times, but we're done now. From here, I'm going to save, we're going to come out of this and we're going to run this file again. And we should now see exactly the same thing that we just had, except now we are running this here. You can see we have sessions one and it will tell us, and this is because that one's just closed, that it's actually running it through our Selenium grid. You can just see it there. I've got everything on the screen at the moment. You get the idea. Now, what's important about this is a couple of different things. One, well, we're actually only using one of the available 12 browser instances concurrently that we could be using. And also, if we can connect remotely, surely we can use something better than just running this through the, the, the Java file here. We can use Docker. So I'm going to close this and we'll get this stopped and out of the way and get rid of that browser instance. So I'm going to close down my uh, Java version. We don't need you anymore. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of this file and I'm just going to show you my Docker Compose file. Now, this is available easily on the, on the internet. I found this on GitHub. 
This basically means it's going to pull the Docker image that we need. It's going to run it with Selenium Hub. This is slightly different. This is not the same as the Selenium standalone, which is what we just looked at. This is the Hub and uh, Node version. And as you can see, we're going to have a max sessions of 10, which is what I stipulated. I could probably change that to 12 because that's what it said I could do, but I'm just going to leave it at 10 for now. Using Docker here now, I can actually do docker compose up. And this is going to start this up like so, and you'll see everything's getting going. And this is actually crime instances in this case. Now you can see that this has all worked. And if I come back over to my grid and go to overview, now we have 10 of the Chrome instance available. I'm just going to close this, stop this for a second, and we're going to run this with the D flag, just so it runs in the background. There we go. So this is going to now just run in the background, and we should still have this available once it gets going. There we go. So let's go back into our uh, YouTube folder and open up our main py file now i did use chrome in this instance because uh, that's what i chose for my docker container so i'm just going to change this to chrome options now instead okay so let's now go ahead and do our py main.py file and we should start to see some data coming back so this is going to run it completely headless so you can see it's working so if i come to here we'll see we have sessions again one and you can see them come and go now this is why i put into my code the driver.close now if you were doing this without uh, driver.quit sorry it's important that it's dot quit now if you were doing this without selenium grid you could absolutely use the same driver and just go page 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 but what you want to make sure you do is that you actually quit that driver out otherwise it's going to stick in that session and it's going to stop everything going because that instance of that browser is just going to run and forever and just sit there until the end of time essentially or till something crashes so that's why i have driver.quit in here just so i know that it's closing now we could of course make this so that driver that browser instance that we spool up could go through multiple pages and do all of that stuff that we normally do. I just have it doing one thing at the moment. So that's worth bearing in mind. Now I mentioned at the top of the video concurrency. Now we can do concurrency within Python. There are a few options. I'm going to use concurrent futures. Now there is a thing with concurrent futures where sometimes it will have issues with memory. However, I'm still experimenting with this and I found it the easiest way to show you how we can actually run multiple browser instances using Grid and Python. So we are indeed going to do that. So we need to add in a few bits extra into our code. So we need to do import concurrent uh, dot futures like so. Now using concurrent futures and the thread pool executor, we can then basically run this function concurrently so we have multiple instances of Chrome going. Now to do that underneath my pass HTML function here, we're gonna put in a piece of code. We are gonna use a context manager with, and we're gonna say concurrent futures, the thread pool executor, and we're gonna give it max workers of 10 because we have 10 browser instances. So I figured that just makes the most sense as executor. I want to say that the results that we want to get back from running all of this in concurrently or in parallel, we want to have a list back. And I want to say this is going to be of the executor.map, which is basically going to allow us to run a function against a list. So our list is this URLs and our function is the get HTML. So we do get HTML and then our URLs like so. So I'm going to save this. We just need to then change this. So for, let's, uh, let's get rid of this. We need to do then loop through our results effectively. So we're going to load up all of our browsers in one go, and then we're going to get all the results back and they're going to be in this result file. So we'll do for res in results. And of course the result from this get HTML function, uh, ZZ centers the OVM in your screen, which is really cool, is actually a uh, HTML page. So it's a load of HTML text. So we can then go ahead and print out 
our pass HTML of res like so. Okay, so let's give this a go. Let's run it. Let's do pi main.py and come over to our Selenium grid. And you can see that we have one session going and it goes up to eight. And we are basically, this. these are all of the browsers that we are running at the moment. Uh, oh, and they've all finished, which means there's our information come back. So basically we loaded up all of those browsers in one go through Selenium grid. And then we basically got all the information back and then queried it through uh, passing the HTML. Now there's a lot of cool stuff that we could do with this. If you think about what Docker is good for, and that is for deploying stuff and having things running in their own container, we could put this onto a droplet, DigitalOcean, for example, and we could now run our scripts that need Selenium on a DigitalOcean droplet in the cloud or something like that much easier than it did need to be before. We can also run all of this stuff concurrently so you can greatly speed up any code that requires some kind of uh, action like this multiple ways. So for example, what we could do is we could go to either 10 or so different websites at once and start scraping that way. Or we could start with a list of URLs like this, like I've done here. Or even you could go ahead and go to one page, pull back the URLs and then action against that if you wanted to actually uh, spider your way out, for example. So that's it. Let me know what you think about Selenium Grid. Let me know if you've used it more than I have, which probably maybe you have. And let me know what the best way to work with it is because I'm only just sort of starting to work with it and I'm finding it pretty interesting. There's lots more going on on my channel coming up soon too. There's a Discord, which is going to be linked in the description. So if you want to join that, go ahead and click that in, come and have a chat. There's Patreon going on as well. So that's down there. Come and have a chat with that. And if you want to watch more of my videos, definitely do that and start with this one. More web scraping stuff that I think you will enjoy.